Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of our national anthem. Thank you. Please be seated. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this auspicious occasion in the lives of our George Mason High School seniors. We extend an especially warm welcome to the friends and families of our seniors. We know that some of you have traveled great distances to be with us this evening. We think that you will find it was worth the trip. I am joined on stage by George Mason valedictory scholars and speakers, Grace Castillo and Paul Sanders. We are greatly honored by the presence and participation of the Honorable Karen A. Hennenberg. Judge Hennenberg retired recently from Arlington County General District Court after 18 years of service. She is a resident of Falls Church City and mother of two former George Mason High School students, Kenneth and Benjamin Lasso. I wish to welcome you especially, Judge Hennenberg. Also joining us on stage, Senior Class President Ali Plata, Senior Class Vice President John Carr. Senior Class Secretary Peggy Brosey. Senior Class Treasurer Courtney King. And I'll ask you to hold your applause until all the adults are read. Thank you. Assistant, uh, excuse me, Superintendent Dr. Tony Jones. Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum, Innovation, and in Personnel, Ms. Lisa High. School Board Vice Chair, Mr. Justin Castillo. Falls Church City Mayor, Mayor David Tarter. Senior Class Advisors, Mr. Will Snyder and Mr. Eric Healy. Director of Special Education and Student Services, Ms. Elizabeth Germer. Director of Counseling, Ms. Amy Krajanowicz. Assistant Principal, Ms. Jeannie Seabridge. Assistant Principal, Mr. Matthew Hills. Dean of Students, Mr. Jonathan Pepper. Band Director, Ms. Mary Jo West and the George Mason Symphonic Band. And to my left, the George Mason Choir, directed by Ms. Lauren Glass. Now a round of applause. I now invite Class Vice President John Carr to come forward and welcome you on behalf of his fellow seniors. Good evening. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to family, friends, guests, and my fellow classmates to the commencement ceremony of George Mason High School for the class of 2014. On behalf of our class, I'd like to thank our parents for your love and support, our teachers for your guidance and patience, and to our friends for being there along the way. 
I would also like to thank our class sponsors, Mr. Snyder and Mr. Healy, for making this a remarkable senior year. Finally, I would like to thank all of you, the class of 2014, for being the greatest class George Mason has ever had. I trust that all of you will remember the short time spent at Mason for years to come. It is now my sincere pleasure to introduce the school board vice chair, Mr. Justin Castillo, who will bring greetings from the board. Thank you, Ms. Carr. Good afternoon, I'm Justin Castillo, vice chair of the school board of the Falls Church City Public Schools. On behalf of the school board, Congratulations to the class of 2014. <laughs> to parents, guardians, family, and friends of the class of 2014, to Judge Henneberg and to our other honored guests, welcome. Susan Carney, chair of the board, is out of town and asked me to appear in her place. I'm not sure her travel planning was intentional, but I'm grateful that her schedule made it possible for me to be up here both uh, on behalf of the school board as well as a proud parent. This is a day of celebration and of accomplishment and of pride and of reflection. It's also a day to give thanks. First, I'd like to thank the parents, guardians, family, and friends of the class of 2014 for their love and support in the past and in the years to come. Second, thank you to Mr. Bird and to the faculty, staff, and leadership at George Mason High School. Their professionalism, hard work, and dedication have created a fine institution of learning. Third, I'd like to thank everybody at Mount Daniel, Thomas Jefferson Elementary School, and Mary Ellen Henderson Middle School for their work with the class of 2014 to get them here and lay the foundation for your many successes, as well as to Dr. Tony Jones and to her team at the central office. Finally, thanks to Mayor Tarter, to the members of the City Council, and to the citizens of Falls Church for their continued support and education-oriented vision that the founders of our city had some 60 years ago. Those members of the greatest generation who helped to make Falls Church what it is today would be pleased by what is going on here today. Now to the class of 2014. It's amazing to see how much you've accomplished in so many areas in the music, the arts, robotics, academics, sports, theater, community service, and so much more, you've had a great run. The list of awards, championships, and accolades that you've won individually and working together on teams and in groups is impressive. Of course, the question is, <laughs> where do you go from here? You graduate today with an educational system in a state of flux. You're also entering a world where, like it or not, you'll be learning for the rest of your life, which is great because there's plenty to learn. The question is how. There are plenty of tools out there, some such as Google, Khan Academy, and depending on your teacher, maybe Wikipedia, have gone mainstream. Farther down the road, you have your massive open online courses, the so-called MOOCs. One educator in India has even claimed that kids can teach themselves. All you have to do is give them a laptop and an internet connection. I'm not so sure about that concept, especially if Facebook isn't blocked. So what do you do in this brave new world of learning? That's one, that's one option. Um, <laughs> uh, my challenge to each of you is to make teaching a part of your education. Don't just be a consumer of education, be a participant and a creator as well. Teaching something well gives you far greater understanding and appreciation of what you've learned. We have several doctors in my, my wife's family and there's a joke in medical school about surgery. You watch one, you do one, and you teach one. That's not exactly how it works, I hope. But the saying contains an essential truth. You can bet a student is going to be much more attentive if she knows that she's going to be doing the teaching of somebody else of that same procedure soon. In addition, teaching doesn't happen just in the classroom. I'm a lawyer and a judge, I don't know if you've ever done this, Judge Hannenberg, opened the hearing by telling the parties, 
Teach me. A good teacher is part magician, part psychologist, and part scholar. In addition, teachers, teaching takes compassion, takes patience, and it takes discipline. And all of these skills will have great bearing for you in all aspects of your life. Many of you have already started teaching through tutoring, volunteering, or community service. But all of you soon will become teachers in one way or another, especially if you're lucky enough to become a parent. Which is why the people sitting behind you are as much your teachers as those in the faculty sitting here on the stage on either side of you. Since you'll have to teach, you should learn to do it well. So this is my charge to the class of 2014. Make teaching part of your learning. Watch your teachers. And remember, you'll find teachers everywhere, not just in the classroom. Study how they teach, not just what they teach. And then go and try it yourself. It doesn't matter what, teach somebody math, edit a paper, teach guitar or a volleyball serve. I think you'll be surprised by the results. So good luck and go Mustangs. This time I'd like to present presentation of awards. The George Mason Scholar Award recognizes the outstanding academic achievement of our graduating seniors. This award is presented to students who have completed a high school program which includes a minimum of 25 credits, a cumulative grade point average of 3.85, and the following courses taken for letter grades. Four years of social studies, four years of college preparatory mathematics, three years of one foreign language, or two years of two different foreign languages three years of laboratory science and international baccalaureate courses in two disciplines. This year, there are 49 students receiving this award. They are wearing silver medallions this evening to signify their outstanding academic achievement. In the fall, these students will be attending the following post-secondary institutions. California Polytechnic Institute and State University, Clemson University, Davidson College, College of William and Mary, George Mason University, James Madison University, Juniata College, McGill University, Michigan State University, Ohio State University, Penn State University, School of Art Institute in Chicago, Slippery Rock University, Smith College, United States Naval Academy, University of Chicago, University of Florida, University of Hartford, the Hart School, University of Nebraska, Lincoln, University of Pittsburgh, University of Toronto, University of Virginia, University of Roslaw, Virginia Commonwealth University, Virginia Polytechnic Institute and State University, Washington University in St. Louis, and Yale University. The recipients of the George Mason Scholar Award will be recognized when they receive their diplomas. Finally, we recognize 34 students tonight who have earned the distinction of being named George Mason Valedictory Scholars by maintaining a cumulative grade point average of 4.0 or better throughout their high school years. They are wearing gold medallions this evening to signify their outstanding academic achievement. These recipients will also be recognized when they receive their diploma. And in closing, I would just like to say congratulations to the class of 2014. You have been outstanding, and we can't wait to see what wonderful opportunities are in your future and when you come back and share those with us. Thank you.
flesh. I cut my teeth on wedding rings in the movies, and I'm not proud of my dress. I'm torn uptown, no postcode and be. But every song's like gold teeth, gray goose tripping in the bathroom, bloodstains, ball gowns, trash in the hotel room, we don't care. Driving Cadillacs in our dreams, but everybody's like crystal, Maybach, diamonds on your timepiece, jet planes, islands, tigers on a gold leash, we don't care. I'd like to start by thanking everyone, the faculty and staff of George Mason, our families and friends, and the city as a whole. This graduation wouldn't be possible without you all. As this day progresses, there are hundreds of things to say. There are congratulations to wish, advice to give, and goodbyes to exchange. I'm sure I'll end up saying all three before the day is done. Yet at this moment, as our grade graduate, graduates and we each begin a new chapter of our lives, I keep coming back not to the congratulations of relatives, advice of teachers, or impending goodbyes, but rather to a book. Strange as it may sound, some of the most important life lessons I've learned have come from the complete Calvin and Hobbes. After years of reading and rereading Bill Watterson's beloved comics, I've gleaned two major lessons that I think apply to every stage of life. One, ask questions about the larger situation, and two, value the, the present. The first lesson is present throughout the comics and helps create the humor and kindness characteristic of the series. One aspect of Calvin's personality that is both remarkable and funny is his ability to find the big picture and I think it's something that we, as soon-to-be graduates, could benefit from. Going through high school has lent itself to a sort of tunnel vision. 
We needed to get through assignments and applications in order to ensure later success. And sometimes this forward focus clouded larger, more important issues. It's wonderful that we're here graduating. But if you take a step back, our place in the larger society becomes more evident. Less than wonderful facts surface. Few other high school classes have a graduation rate close to ours. The caps and gowns we are wearing were produced, likely using fossil fuels, only to be worn once. We're leaving our high school to enter a world in need of repair. To go through the rest of life without realizing our place as part of a larger community is all too easy, yet building a better world requires at least some degree of global thought. The second and arguably most influential lesson I've learned from Calvin and Hobbes is the importance of valuing the present. I've often gotten the sense that I'm hurtling towards something just out of reach, chasing the next opportunity, the next scholarship, the next after-school activity. Looking at the world through that lens, neither how much I accomplished nor the meaning of those accomplishments could make up for the feeling that there was just one more thing to do, an assignment, essay, or application, before I could really allow myself to relax or curl up with a book or take the day to go hiking. I know several of my classmates have experienced a similar feeling. After all, making it through high school, the last two years of it especially, often required late nights, hours of homework, and a grueling list of extracurriculars to attend. There was a feeling of an acute lack of time, and no matter how interesting our classes were, the workload was such that oftentimes the only way to motivate ourselves to get through everything was to focus on the future. Though this approach of working for the future was necessary in high school, it's dangerous. Tomorrow is never a good time to start living the way you want. That's what today is for. We've all expended time and energy on things we simply don't like, and there will always be an element of that over the years. But after we graduate, we do have more choice over what we do, and I'd ur I would urge everyone to minimize expenditures on things that aren't fulfilling and focus on working on the things you love. In one of my favorite sections of the comic, Calvin is sitting at his desk, bored. Suddenly, he sits up and exclaims, what on earth am I doing in here? This is the only life I've got. Calvin is a six-year-old, and he's absolutely right. We're young, 17, 18, but our time is limited and we need to make the most of it. Question, foster friendships, and make sure you not only plan for the future, but engage in the present. So watch the rest of the ceremony, celebrate these accomplishments, and then go outside and enjoy today. Thank you. At this time, I will recognize four of my colleagues who are serving as faculty marshals. They led our distinguished faculty into the hall this evening. We honor Ms. Jennifer Jason and, Mr., excuse me, and Dr. Peter Mecca as nominees for the 2014 Washington Post Agnes Meyer Outstanding Teacher Award. We salute them on this honor. We also honor Ms. Renata Carvalho, who is retiring from our World Languages Department after 17 years, and Ms. Janet Web Webster, Weber excuse me, from our Math Department, who is retiring after 28 years. I ask them to please stand and be recognized for their fine service to these seniors and many other Mustangs before them. You please stand. I now welcome class treasurer, Courtney King, for the presentation of the class gift. Thank you. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The class of 2014 would like to provide the George Mason High School community um, with a token of our appreciation for all that it has done for us. 
The senior alcoves and courtyard have provided some great times for our class to hang out and bond this past year. With this in mind, our class would like to add some more comfort for future Mustangs by contributing outdoor furniture for the senior courtyard. We hope that future Mason classes will be able to enjoy this gift as they use the two new microwaves that we are also contributing to Mason. Thank you. Yeah, okay, that's on. <clears throat> First off, I would like to express how honored I am to address you all here today. Friends, family, classmates, and assorted others, you've all gathered here today to witness the culmination of 18 years of hard work and dedication that could not have been possible without your continued love, help, and support. And so I feel I must formally say to all of you, you're welcome. Before I go about trying to impart all of the heavy, world-weary life experience I have accumulated in my long and tenured, 18-year life sentence, I have a couple thank yous I'd like to share. I'd like to thank elementary school recorder concerts for proving that there is, in fact, a more annoying sound in this world than a vuvuzela. I'd like to thank my classmate and dear friend, Maeve Curtin, for finally proving to neurologists the world over that sleep is optional and by no means necessary. I'd like to thank Theory of Knowledge class for teaching me that even a yes or no question can be answered with, nah, maybe. <laughs> I'd like to thank therapy for allowing me to convince myself that middle school never happened. <laughs> and I'd like to thank Facebook for constantly reminding me that middle school did in fact happen. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, I'd like to thank the IB Diploma Program for teaching me that writing an essay is not about what you say, but how many times you say it, and to what extent. Ever since I was young, I always had a reoccurring dream where I, spoke to a large, where I spoke to a large crowd wearing nothing but a robe and a stupid hat. But I figured it'd be after I'd started my cult. <laughs> Life is funny like that. Things don't always go as you may expect. In Falls Church, there's a unique title bestowed upon a student that has spent their entire lives here, a lifer. At this time, I want all lifers in here to please stand up. Look around. I want you all to recognize these people who you've known for most of your lives. Now, non-lifers, I want to recognize you too. Thank you for pumping flesh blood, fresh blood into the stale circulatory system of Falls Church City Public Schools. You keep things interesting. But as a Falls Church lifer, our existence up until this point has been defined by a series of expectations, from Mount Daniel to TJ to Mems, and finally on to Mason. So many of our paths were set from so very early on. And as a result, a strange connection is formed between us classmates. We've become an extended family, which I guess is why dating always seemed like incest. <laughs> but nevertheless, nevertheless, a family, one who has both suffered and delighted through everything Falls Church City Public Schools has had to offer. Together, we can look back through the lens of nostalgia as one and recall 12 years of shared memories. Whether it be getting hyped up on Mountain Dew and dancing the Soldier Boy at a Midnight Madness, <laughs> to the overwhelming power one felt as the King of Foursquare at TJ, to the self-importance and confidence that came with being the line leader at Mount Daniel. Now, we're not a perfect family. We have our disagreements, our favorite people to talk to, as well as talk about. We've all had our fair share of drama, heartache, pain, and loss. Yet when we succeed, the victory and pride is communal. We've shared these experiences as a single collective consciousness, the Mason consciousness. And now we've reached a crossroads in our carefully calculated paths. Some of you may have plans, a well-defined set of goals to achieve after high school. However, if you like me, you have no idea what you're gonna do next. <laughs> I'd be lying if I said I wasn't terrified of the future. Uncertainty and doubt plague me daily. You know, what if I don't make friends next year? What if I don't like my college? How am I gonna present myself next year? And that's a big one. We've spent so much time and effort carefully cultivating our identities that the prospect of total anonymity is frightening. My only piece of advice for you is this. Embrace the chaos and go with the flow. 
Sometimes you have to shake the tree in order to get at the juiciest fruits. You may find yourself in a situation where your major isn't at all what you want to do with your life, and that's okay. You may, for the first time, completely and utterly fail at something, and that's okay. I want you to try everything and never say no. Find something that you love doing, and you'll never work a day in your life. The great philosopher Mortimer Smith once said, nobody belongs anywhere, nobody exists on purpose, everyone is gonna die, come watch TV. <laughs> Which I interpret to mean, don't get so hung up on what may be or what will be that you forget to just be. Life moves pretty fast, and if you don't stop to look around once in a while, you could miss it. After all, the present is a gift. I don't want you to waste it. Live your life and not a lie. Thank you. Our commencement speaker this evening is an accomplished woman who has served Virginia for many years. Judge Hennenberg is a former judge of Arlington County's General District Court and is now a substitute judge for Arlington County. Currently, she is a distinguished adjunct professor for George Mason University Law School. She graduated cum laude from Randolph-Macon's Women's College and received her JD from the University of Richmond School of Law. In addition to being a respected judge, she is an attorney, a mother, and an outstanding citizen. She and her husband live in the city of Falls Church, and both her sons attended George Mason High School. You can find a short list of her many accomplishments printed in the program. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to present to you the Honorable Karen A. Hennenberg. <laughs> My hands are very sweaty. <laughs> Always have to lower the microphone. Thank you so much for inviting me. I am so honored to be here today. This is an exciting day. You are graduating from one of the best high schools in the United States. In partnership with your parents and you, George Mason High School has prepared you to enter the world as an educated and well-rounded adult. As an aside, I'm proud to say that both my sons attended George Mason High School, uh, <clears throat> Kenneth Lasso and Ben Lasso. Uh, both of them went on to college, and one of them went on to graduate school. At a recent family dinner, I asked my sons, what should I talk about uh, at this commencement speech? And this is what they said. They said, don't sugarcoat it, Mom. Tell it like it is. Make your speech memorable. Make them get the hook and drag you off the stage. That's what they said to me. Well, I considered their advice, and I decided to take that advice, except the part about saying things that would get me dragged off stage. So my remarks that I'm going to make tonight are both optimistic and realistic. Each of you have achieved a great goal by graduating from high school, and you've done so through the hard work and support and encouragement of your teachers, your school administrators, and your family members. Please give them a round of applause. As you get older, you'll learn that great goals can only be achieved through the support of family, friends, and teachers. That bears repeating. Great goals can only be achieved through the support of others. All of you will continue your education, whether it's instruction from a college professor or in your, from a work supervisor or for, from a colleague. And if you're smart, you'll be a lifelong learner and continue learning every day of your life. One of the friends my husband, Dave Lasso, and I made in our long association with the City of Falls Church is Dr. Warren Pace. He was the superintendent of Falls Church Public Schools during its rapid growth period during, during, during the baby boomer years. That was his mantra, and, that is, it is, and it is ours. Be a lifelong learner. 
I've been working in the legal system for over 35 years, and during that time, I've learned a few things. Contrary to popular opinion, and please don't tell the lawyers I said this, but judges don't know everything. And I continue to learn something new every day, and I'm not embarrassed uh, to say so. While presiding in court, I often say, I try to learn something new every day. And this is what I learned today. It may be a new law, it may be a new police procedure, a new agency policy, or it might be something about or from one of the many citizens who appear before me in the course of a day. That continuous learning process is what makes me a better judge and a better professor. That continuous learning process, that philosophy of being open to learning new things, will make all of you better at whatever goal you choose. Let's talk about goals for a minute. You may or may not know what you want to do. You may or not, may not know what you want to be when you grow up. That's OK. I'll tell you a secret. I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. I've had the good fortune to pursue many things in my life, to have been a prosecutor, a criminal defense attorney, a civil attorney, a judge, and a college and law school professor. And all of these things have brought me and continue to bring me great joy and satisfaction. Now, on the other hand, if you, th you may think you know what you want to do, but that could change. When I was in high school, I had a great history teacher. And I thought, you know, when I go to college, I'm going to major in history. Well, I ended up taking some political science classes with a fantastic professor, classes in constitutional law and political elections. And I guess you know the end of the story. I changed my mind, and I decided to major in political science. Now, after college, I applied to law school and also graduate school in political science, and I was fortunate to be accepted by both. I was faced with a decision as to which road I would take. Did I want to be a lawyer, uh, or did I want to be a college professor? And interestingly, I became the former, a lawyer, and now I'm the latter, a college and law school professor. I mention this because each of you may face a crossroads as to which path you're going to take. Do you want to further your formal education? Do you want to try a different job? Do you want to try a new career? I encourage you to follow your heart and pursue your passion. I frequently quote this proverb, which has already been quoted uh, earlier today, find a job you love and you'll never work a day in your life. Keep in mind that no decision is irrevocable. You can try something, and if it's not what you want to do, you can try <coughs> excuse me, something else. The world is changing very quickly, and you must be able to adapt. But don't be afraid. You are ready. Unlike previous generations, where a person would have a job for 30 years and then get a gold watch at the end, that's not the situation with you. Statistics show that you will have many jobs, many careers in your lifetime. And this is good news. You can change your career and your goals as it suits your interest. Another word about goals. Don't concentrate so much on reaching your goals, on getting to that destination, that you fail to enjoy the journey along the way to reach these goals. John Lennon, one of the Beatles, wrote a song called Beautiful Boy, and it had a prophetic line. Now, you may not know who John Lennon was, but your parents do. How many of you know who John Lennon was? All right, good, good. One of the lines in that song was this, quote, life is what happens when you're busy making other plans, end quote. And so keep in mind, make sure that you enjoy life's journey as you pursue your dreams. Many uh, speakers who make commencement speeches quote from famous historical people, Gandhi, Plato, etc. And while each of us can learn from these famous philosophers and political leaders, 
I'm going to quote uh, someone who's a little less famous, a little less well-known, Forrest Gump. How many of you have seen the movie Forrest Gump? See, my husband was wrong. You have seen the movie. Okay. If you haven't seen it, I encourage you to do so. One of the most intelligent and insightful things that Forrest Gump said in the movie was this. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Believe it or not, when I speak to visiting students of all ages who visit my courtroom, and over the course of my career, I've had elementary kids, middle school, high school, college, and graduate students. When they come to the, my courtroom and they say, what's it like to be a judge? I tell them that being a general district court judge is like a box of chocolates. I never know what I'm going to get. I never know what may happen in the cases before me each day. That's what makes my job so exciting and interesting, and that is what makes life so exciting and interesting. You'll never know what wonderful things may happen. And I will conclude by quoting Mark Twain. And he said, <coughs> excuse me, 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the ones you did. So throw off the bowlines, sail away from safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sail, sails, excuse me, explore, dream, discover. Thank you so very much and congratulations to all of you. Just to clear the air, I ask 
forgiveness for the things I've done you blame me for. But then again, I guess there's blame to share. And none of it seems to matter anymore. Like a comet, like a morbid, as it passes the sun. Like a stream that meets a boulder, halfway through the wood. Who can say if I've been changed for the better? I have been changed for the better Because I knew you Because I knew you Because I knew you I have been changed For good It is now my distinct pleasure to invite my colleagues, Ms. Seabridge and Mr. Hills, Assistant Principals, Ms. Krajanowicz, Director of Counseling, Mr. Pepper, Dean of Students, Mr. Healy, Senior Class Advisor, and Mr. Snyder, Senior Class Advisor, to join me in presenting the diplomas to the Class of 2014. Peggy Remison Brosey, Valedictory Scholar, George Mason Scholar. John Carr. Grace Ann Castillo. Valedictory Scholar, George Mason Scholar, IB Diploma, National Honor Society. Her diploma is presented by her father and school board vice chair, Justin Castillo. Courtney Breitmeyer King, Valedictory Scholar, George Mason Scholar, IB Diploma, National Honor Society. Ali Elizabeth Plata. Paul Hayden Sanders, Valedictory Scholar, George Mason Scholar, IB Diploma. Daniel David Abel. Jake Philip Acosta. Michael Francis Edo Ashan. Maxwell Eifer, IB Diploma. Ashley Elizabeth Alexander. <laughs> Caleb Elwood Allen. <laughs> Camilla Ann Alsobrook.
Rebecca Naguse Amada. Michael Francis Acefa. Anna Elizabeth Ayer, Valedictory Scholar, George Mason Scholar, IB Diploma, National Honor Society. Camille Margot Babington, Valedictory Scholar, George Mason Scholar, IB Diploma. Callum Sefton Murray Bartlett. Valedictory Scholar, George Mason Scholar, IB Diploma, National Honor Society. David Cochran Benton. Mache Yaroslav BLS. George Mason Scholar, IB Diploma. Maya Keller Blurton. Caitlin Elaine Bond. Christina Gonzalez Buckleton. Giovanna Berdiso Gutierrez. <laughs> Jenna Elizabeth Burnett. <laughs> James Joseph Bush. Vincent Philip Camacho. <laughs> Huntley Josiah Campbell. Anna Ray Carlson, IB Diploma. Brand Logan Carson, George Mason Scholar. Andrea Castaneda Guzman. Jaya Balakrishnan Shavern. Valedictory Scholar, George Mason Scholar, IB Diploma. Christian Gabrielle Chiari. Wari Cho. Brian Francisco Connolly, IB Diploma. <laughs> Lillian Lee Constance, Valedictory Scholar, George Mason Scholar, IB Diploma. James Lawrence Kopic. Wesley Stephen Coupard. John Patrick Croak. Maeve Constance Curtin. Valedictory Scholar, George Mason Scholar, IB Diploma, National Honor Society.
Preston Forsberg Custer. Valedictory Scholar, George Mason Scholar, IB Diploma, National Honor Society. Oh, Truman Epps Custer. Noelle Elizabeth Darling, Valedictory Scholar, George Mason Scholar, National Honor Society. Paul Frederick Darmstadter. Mary Ellen Lyndon Davis. George Mason Scholar. Mikael Mark D'Souza. Maria DeHart, Valedictory Scholar, George Mason Scholar, IB Diploma. Sophia Rebecca DeLeo, George Mason Scholar. Allison De La Cueva. David Joseph Drawbaugh, IB Diploma. Matthew Mark Ehrman. Pass up Matt. Matt. <laughs> Shane Joshua Enzyme. <laughs> Jacob Allen I. Adam Austin Fenley. John Reed Fennerty, IB Diploma Candidate, National Honor Society. Jacob Holloway Field. Ryan Patrick Fields. <laughs> Natalie Andrea Flores. <laughs> Nathaniel Peterson Freeman. Kyle David Gannon. Austin Steves Gogol. Valedictory Scholar, George Mason Scholar, IB Diploma, National Honor Society. Sarah Elizabeth Gomper. Valedictory Scholar, George Mason Scholar, IB Diploma, National Honor Society. Evan D. Gorman. Valedictory Scholar, George Mason Scholar, National Honor Society. Claire Margaret Gabot. Zoe Claire Grippo, Valedictory Scholar, IB Diploma, National Honor Society. Valerie Catherine Gilbo. Hey, 
Grant Sitterly Hegler, <laughs> valedictory scholar, George Mason scholar. Alexandra Francis K. Hairston. <laughs> Emma Hannon, George Mason Scholar, IB Diploma. Juliet Francis Hegedorn, Valedictory Scholar, George Mason Scholar, IB Diploma, National Honor Society. Jonah Davis Hicks, IB Diploma. Cole Alexander Hinson. Caitlin Marie Hoff. Nicholas Adams Hokai, valedictory scholar, George Mason scholar, IB diploma. Marina Mary Hoppy. Grace Caroline Hausman, National Honor Society. John Charles Hoy. Bavya Iser, IB Diploma. Michelle Janie Coyle, Valedictory Scholar, George Mason Scholar, IB Diploma, National Honor Society. Nathaniel Scott Jones, IB Diploma. Romy Graham Jovaro. Jiha Cameron. Sarah Leslie Carstens, valedictory scholar, George Mason scholar, IB diploma, National Honor Society. Caitlin Elizabeth Kay. Sebastian Johan K. George Mason Scholar. Peter Alexander George Keener. Lauren Paulina Keith, IB Diploma. Noor Khan. Zaim Hassan Khan. Kelsey Louise Kinner. J.C. Grant Klein. Sinan Betu Kokuslu. Trajan Kraus Lee. Margaret Elizabeth Cook. Applause 
Ada Laguna. Aaron J. Laganoff. Genevieve Elise Laganoff. Vincent Vin Lee, IB Diploma, National Honor Society. Megan Michelle Leach, National Honor Society. Michael J. Leskey. Stephen Michael Lethbridge. Matthew Glenn Lowry. Kathleen Pia Lozada. Chio Lu Tokizawa. <laughs> Kayo Lu Tokizawa. <laughs> Emily Marie Lubno. Autumn Taylor Macon, National Honor Society. Sarah Elizabeth McCreese, Valedictory Scholar, George Mason Scholar, IB Diploma, National Honor Society. Alexandra Marple, Valedictory Scholar, George Mason Scholar, National Honor Society. John Paxton Marshall, George Mason Scholar, National Honor Society. Adam Crawford Martin. Robert Joseph Martinez. Poppy Olivia Molly Mason. David Edward McAllister. Molly Kate McGee, National Honor Society. Hallie Marie McKinney. Yep. Eleanor Lee McLean, Valedictory Scholar, George Mason Scholar, IB Diploma, National Honor Society. Lauren Meinhart, Valedictory Scholar, George Mason Scholar, IB Diploma, National Honor Society. Jonathan Joel Malara. Sarah Kristen Mills, George Mason Scholar, Ivy Diploma Candidate, National Honor Society. Rebecca Elena Moot.
Jacob Morris, valedictory scholar, George Mason scholar. Morgan Alexandra Frida Moraviak. Abhijit Narain. Miyoko Brody Nemec. Nicholas Newman. Hunter Olson, IB Diploma. Joseph Youngjun Park, George Mason Scholar, IB Diploma. Juliet Kathleen Passapalati. Andrea Elise Philbin. Samantha Ann Porzell, Valedictory Scholar, George Mason Scholar, National Honor Society. Andrew Owen Puller. Darby Lee Quave, George Mason Scholar. Rohan Singh Rana, IB Diploma. Joel Rindra Randriana Solo, National Honor Society. Oh, Joel Rindra Randriana Solo. Renee Marianne Ravenera. Connor Edward Rhodes. Camille Elizabeth Rice, IB Diploma. David Allen Reese. Amy Lisette Garcia Rivas. Nicholas Alexander Robertson, IB Diploma, National Honor Society. Samantha Rolander, George Mason Scholar, National Honor Society. Juliana Teresa Rollo, National Honor Society. Fernando Matthew Rondon. Sarah Larissa Rupert, valedictory scholar, George Mason scholar, IB diploma. Noah Duke Saberhagen.
Kevin Steve Sanchez. Erica Marion Schneider, valedictory scholar, George Mason scholar, IB diploma, National Honor Society. Rafe Sebastian Schultz. Dana Rocio Sembera, valedictory scholar, George Mason scholar. Adam Ferrara Sese. Nathan Ferrara Sese, National Honor Society. Margarita Shevchenko, IB Diploma. Andrew James Skamra. Harry Benjamin Slonum. Gabriella Michelle Smith, valedictory scholar, George Mason scholar, IB diploma, National Honor Society. Julianne Veronica Smith. Madison Grace Soltis. Maria Soshnikova, George Mason Scholar, National Honor Society. Jackson Brian Stryker, George Mason Scholar, IB Diploma, National Honor Society. Charlotte Ann Sudweeks. Rosa Marie Bailey Sugarman. <laughs> Sarah Suntorn Sweeney, IB Diploma. <laughs> Nottingham Belena Tashom. Anastasia Tolstikin, George Mason Scholar, IB Diploma, National Honor Society. Claire Noel Trevisan, Valedictory Scholar, George Mason Scholar, IB Diploma, National Honor Society. Benjamin Daniel Trock. Jade Weta Trackman, George Mason Scholar, IB Diploma, National Honor Society. Katie Padilla Velasquez. <laughs> Zoe Dahlia Villamar, Valedictory Scholar, George Mason Scholar, IB Diploma, National Honor Society. Catherine Wakeley, George Mason Scholar, National Honor Society. Nathaniel Joseph Ward, IB Diploma.
Alexander Murray Warren. Joseph Parker Warren. <laughs> Cecilia Ann Wiley. John Sheridan Williams. <laughs> Andrew Garrett Williamson. <laughs> Jacob Ryan Wilson. Leah Helene Worley, IB Diploma, National Honor Society. Nicole Alexandra Zorniak. On behalf of the faculty of George Mason, the Office of the Superintendent, and the School Board, and with the power vested in me by the Department of Education of the Commonwealth of Virginia, I hereby confer upon these diplomas and the recognition of your fulfillment of the requirements for high school graduation. Judge Hindenburg, Mr. Castillo, Dr. Jones, Ms. High, Mayor Tarter, Ms. Germer, faculty of George Mason, parents, relatives, and guests, I present to you the George Mason High School graduated class of 2014. Thank you. If you'd have a seat, graduates. Not done yet. Before I invite Ali to bring our ceremony to a close, I ask that you join me in saying thanks to the people who all too often go unnoticed as they work to make certain that our building runs smoothly, or as smoothly as a building with 800 young people in it can. Thanks to our bus drivers and our transportation department under the leadership of Ms. Hendrickson. Thanks to our custodial and maintenance staff. Thanks to our members of our cafeteria un under the leadership of Mr. Kane, and also thanks to Ms. Monahan, Ms. Nettie, Ms. Kemp, Ms. Chassi, Ms. Baldo, Ms. Bird, Ms. Clinton, and my boss, Ms. Flanagan, for each for every everything that they do. They go above and beyond on a regular basis to ensure that teachers, counselors, and administrators are prepared to effectively instruct, guide, and support our children. Let's give them a round of applause, please. Graduating class of 2014, you've done it. You've reached this very important milestone in your life, and you have done so with style and grace. Individually, you have achieved much. Collectively, we have achieved much, much more. George Mason High School does not pretend to be a perfect institution of learning. Instead, we are an ever-improving collective of individuals who are perpetually committed to achieving excellence in mind, body, and character. As we, the faculty of George Mason, stand with you today, proud representatives of the professionals who serve at Mount Daniel, Thomas Jefferson, Mary Ellen Henderson, and various other schools around the nation and the world, I ask that you take a moment to say thanks to the people who have helped you reach this point. 
Students, as an expression of our collective appreciation for their tireless efforts on your behalf, I ask that you offer a round of applause for our teachers, counselors, and parents and guardians. I also ask that we offer a special applause for Ms. Weber and Ms. Carvalho, who have dedicated their professional lives to the service of others. Please join me in a round of applause. <laughs> Students, be excited about the opportunities that await you, but be mindful to reflect on the journey that you have taken to arrive here today. We hope that you now, at this very moment, appreciate each and every step along the path. Some steps were difficult, others were easy. We ask that you recognize and appreciate that each one mattered. I leave, I leave you today with the words of modern day poet and newly minted Mason alum, Lily Constance. Live by kindness. Lily shared that simple yet profound message during, with her classmates during her capstone presentation. And I'm hard pressed to come up with any better way to send you off into the global community. Live a life of kindness and always remember that you are a Mustang for life. Congratulations to the class of 2014. I now ask your class president, Ali Plata, to bring our ceremony to a close. As senior class president and on behalf of the class of 2014, I'd like to thank Mr. Bird, who captures every moment he can on Twitter, our teachers who work tirelessly to challenge and enrich us daily, and lastly, the administration and the school board for their continued love and support the past five years. I remember my first day of eighth grade like it was yesterday. I had on a huge walking boot because I had fractured my ankle that summer, and I remember how nervous I was to start high school. I was afraid of getting lost, afraid of the upperclassmen, and just the idea of being in high school terrified me. I also remember one of my first times walking down the intimidating senior hallway. I was nervous, no surprise, and I still had on my lovely walking boot. I was walking as fast as the boot would let me, trying to keep up with my friends who were just as nervous as me as we were walking in the hallway together. And then something happened that I'll never forget. I slipped in a huge puddle of water on the floor and slipped and fell on my back. <laughs> as soon as I hit the floor, there were gasps, Fall be people asking each other, is she all right? I was so embarrassed and was just about to get up and get out of the situation when a senior who I didn't know grabbed my hands and helped me up. She made sure I was all right and her friends ran to get paper towels to clean up the mess so no one else would slip and fall like I did. Of course I had heard about the cruel seniors and about what high school is like and in any movie script, if an awkward eighth grader with a mouthful of braces and a walking boot slipped in the hallway, they would have been laughed at for years. This may sound cliche, but George Mason is truly different. The students at the school are unlike most, and that's in the best way possible. Countless times I've heard my classmates talk about how George Mason is different from the high school their friends go to, or the high school's down the road from us, and they're entirely correct. At GM, we start every day with a handshake or a high five from Mr. Bird as we walk in the door. At GM, it's not unusual to walk into the bathroom and see words of encouragement staring back at you in the mirror. At GM, spotting an alumnus visiting former teachers to provide an update on their college experience is a regular occurrence. We were raised in this unique environment of uncommon courtesy, of respect and encouragement from one another, whether that's holding the door open for the kid who's running late to school or jumpstarting Andrea's car in the junior parking lot. We're used to crazy school spirit. Would a pep rally or a football game be the same if Wesley wasn't banging an ironing board and Jacob and Jack weren't waving the Mason flags? We're used to championship teams as well as teams that struggle year after year, but that never give up. Don't worry, I won't provide examples for that one. GM is inclusive to the point that you can actually participate in any activity or organization that you want. I mean, I played basketball for two years. That's saying something. <laughs> There's always someone encouraging you to succeed, to push a little harder, to give you guidance, whether it's another student, a teacher, or a member of the administration. This extremely positive atmosphere is hard to find at other schools. And for that, the class of 2014 thanks the community, all of the parents, and every faculty member and employee of the high school. In my opinion, the class of 2014 has captured the essence of a true George Mason Mustang. Collectively, we've pushed one another to do better in every academic, athletic, and social endeavor to make our experience and the experience of every Mustang the best that it can be. 
As we move forward to the next stage of our lives, I hope we can take a little bit of our George Mason experience and share it with all the new faces we're about to meet, whether that's in college, in the job market, or wherever life may take us. Take your Mason enthusiasm, your positive attitude, your open mind, and your Mason work ethic and carry it forward. When you're placed in a position to reach down and help somebody up or reach up and accept help, do it and prepare to return the favor or accept the help that you will certainly need at some point. I would like to thank every member of the class of 2014 for making my time here at Mason so exceptional and I wish all of you the very best that life has to offer. We would ask that you please remain seated as our graduates begin the recession. They'll be preceded by our faculty. We thank everyone for joining us tonight. Fellow graduates, please rise. And one last time, go Mustangs.